Now we are going to find library sources to help us answer our big question. To do that, we're going to follow these five steps. Use the right tool, search with keywords, evaluate results, revise search and repeat, save relevant results. We're not exactly sure what sources we need to answer our big questions yet, so we can't just type in the title of a relevant article and search for it. Instead, we need to use our keywords to discover relevant sources and we need the right tool. For that, using a specific database is the best strategy. Instead of getting thousands of results of all different types, we can be more controlled and find useful information faster by using a database. Let's click on databases to see what our options are. This page includes our library databases and some information about the source types included in each one. It's organized by subject, and as you move forward in your individual program, you may be asked to use subject-specific resources that are on this page. For general searching, we have highlighted these key resources that are good for most topics. ProQuest includes scholarly journals as well as newspaper and magazine articles, all of which can be useful sources to help you answer your big question. Let's click on the ProQuest link and check out some of its features. When you are off campus, you will be prompted to log in to use ProQuest and all of our other paid library resources. On campus, the database will open automatically. Step one is complete. This is the advanced search screen where you can build your first search using the keywords you generated in Unit 4. For example, if you are researching the impact of ocean acidification on salmon populations, you might try salmon ocean acidification as your first search. Key tip, check the full text box. Before you search, check the full text box. Databases include records for some articles and full text for others. Full text means that the whole article is included and you can read it right now. If you don't check the box, you will get some results that are just a record or article stub and you can't use those as sources. So we enter our keywords, check the full text box, and then click search. Now we have our first results list and are ready for step three analyzing our results. Before you click on any of the articles, take a moment to skim the results list and ask yourself some questions. Are they generally on topic? How many of the results look relevant? Do I have a reasonable number of results? If the answers to these questions are yes, most, and yes, then you can proceed to look for sources from this results list. But if not, revise your search. Go back to your list of keywords and try a different search. Key tip, if you have thousands of results, add additional keywords to narrow your search. If you have 10 or fewer results, reduce the number of keywords or try different terms. Searching is a process of learning more about your topic and what keywords and strategies will yield relevant results. It is iterative, meaning that you will change and adapt your strategy with each search teaching you more information that makes the next search more refined than the last. Let's explore this list of results a bit. At the top, you can see the total number of results my search returned and how they are sorted, most recent first. If I'm looking for the newest information possible, I might want to leave it that way. But another useful option is sorting by relevance. This is the database's best guess at what articles would be most useful to me based on my keywords. Below that, we can see that we are only seeing those full text articles. Then we have this checkbox, which limits us to only peer-reviewed publications. Peer-reviewed scholarly journals are a very important source of scientific information, which we will be talking about more in this class. Below is the source type limiter. Here we can see all of the source types that are included in our results list. By clicking on one, I can limit to only that type. This is great for when you know that you need a scholarly journal article or a newspaper or magazine as a source. We've made it to the final step and you're almost ready to practice with your own topic. Here's a results list of articles about emotional support animals. Let's go over a few more features and then talk about step five, how to save relevant articles to share with your group or read later. The only limiter I currently have on is full text and I have too many results. So I would like to do a few more things to narrow. I'm going to select newspapers as my source type and only articles that were published in the last five years. Since I still have so many results, I'm going to go ahead and try just the last year instead and see how many I have. 
This is a more reasonable number, so I'm going to take a look at these results and see if anything jumps out at me as being particularly helpful with my big question. This article, Flying with an Emotional Support Animal, This DOT Guidance Might Help You, looks interesting to me. It's from USA Today, which is a national newspaper, and it's telling me that it's going to include some DOT, Department of Transportation, information, which I think might be useful. So I'm going to click on it and see what it has to say. I've skimmed this article and decided that it is relevant enough to save to read in full later. The best way to do that is to use the Save as PDF button in the upper right-hand corner. Click this button and a download of the article as a PDF will be initiated. When it is complete, open the folder containing the file. It will probably get buried in your downloads, so consider moving it to a special folder for this project and renaming the file something that you will easily recognize. Now you can share this file with your group as needed using Google Drive, email, or Canvas. Key tip. This file contains everything you need to write your citation, including the URL in the details section. Now it's your turn. Practice using the five steps to find relevant newspaper and magazine articles on your big question. Make sure to download the PDF of at least one relevant article before returning to Canvas to take the quiz. Good luck searching. If you have any questions, please contact a librarian using any one of these methods. We are here to help.